Hello again and welcome back. In this section we're going to start to look at pivot tables and pivot charts which many people consider to be about the strongest features of Excel. I'm going to start with a fairly straightforward example just to get some of the basic concepts and terminology over and then I'm going to go into a much more complex example and to show you just how powerful pivot tables and pivot charts are in Excel 2010. So, let's get started. Now before we actually get started, a couple of words of warning about earlier versions of Excel. Pivot tables created in Excel 2003 are really not compatible with Excel 2010 and if you have a version 2003 pivot table your best bet, the one that will probably involve the least problems for you would be to use the data and to recreate a pivot table in Excel 2010 from the data. The second point to bear in mind is that although in many ways Excel 2007 and Excel 2010 seem very similar in many things, pivot tables are one of the areas where there are quite a few changes. Some of them are more changes of terminology but there are some substantial changes as well. So if you're just moving over from 2007 to 2010 you might want to look at what I'm doing here quite carefully as I'll try to point out some of the changes in terminology. So let's get started. Now pivot charts relate to transactional data and in order to prepare data for a pivot chart you really need to work on a couple of basic principles in terms of the data. The first principle is that each transaction should correspond to one row on your sheet. Now these transactions really are very straightforward transactions. They're actually details of sales in a number of stores the date of each sale is in the first column, the name of the store branch is in the second column, the value of the sale which is actually in dollars is in the third column and then the department, the type of produce is in the D column so we have flatbread, breads and so on. Now with each of these we have just that basic information. The examples we're going to look at later on will have quite more complex transactions. If in fact you have information transactions the other way around, so if each column were a transaction, that's not really suitable for building pivot charts in this way and you need to in some way transpose that data. And a couple of other very important points about pivot charts in order to make them reasonably straightforward Yes, headers are a good idea, but keep the headers simple. Ideally, the header will be in one cell. Um, and secondly, you shouldn't have any blank columns or blank rows in your data. So the way I've got this data presented here is pretty much spot on right for a pivot chart. And here's a useful tip when you're creating pivot charts. It's always a good idea to actually put all your data into a table or rather to create a table cr containing all of your data. The reason this is helpful is that if you subsequently add some data or even take some data away Excel 2010 will automatically refresh and redraw the pivot chart on the basis of the contents of the table. So if it comes to changes to data later on you'll find this actually saves you some time quite easy to put your data into a, a table just click somewhere within the data and then use control T um, in my case I know that I've actually got an awful lot of data here so my range is A1 to D34109 as you can see I have a lot of transactions check the box my table has headers click on OK convert the selection to a table yes there we are and I've now got a table in place. Now in order to create the pivot chart we just click anywhere within our data and then on the insert menu there is a pivot table button. Now this button has a top and a bottom and we're going to start by clicking the bottom. Insert pivot table 
and we're going to select the pivot chart menu item so we see the create pivot chart table with pivot chart dialog and within that we have first of all a definition of the data that's going to be analyzed now if I had just selected a range the range would appear here because I put this into a table it's actually linked this to what it's called table 2 you can see up here table 2 just confirms that that's the table that's outlined here and I can actually link to an external data source now I'm not going to do that I'm going to stick with the data I've got here and by default the chart is created on a new worksheet you can put it on an existing worksheet perhaps one you've already prepared for that purpose but I'm going to choose new worksheet click on OK and there we are my new worksheet which is actually called sheet 2 which is created and now let's look at all these various fields and controls that are put on that sheet so now we have our new worksheet the first three columns or this area in the first three columns is actually reserved for the pivot table columns A to C for the pivot table the pivot chart has columns E to M reserved for it and on the right we have the pivot table field list box now this contains a list of the fields and then there are four drop zones at the bottom now the arrangement here what you can actually see is selectable by this little menu and you could it currently says field section and area section stacked you can actually change that the second option is field section and area section side by side so you have a different arrangement field section only and so on now as we start to develop the complexity of the data we're dealing with in pivot tables and pivot charts you'll see the use for those alternatives for the pivot table field list box now apart from these new areas on the worksheet we have a set of four tabs on the ribbon under the heading pivot chart tools we have a design tab which is basically the same as the um, chart design tab we've seen before we have a layout tab and then we have a format tab again these are pretty much the same as we had before and then an analyze tab that we'll look at a little bit later on which is where we do analysis on the data in our pivot table so as a first step in creating a pivot chart let's enable one of the fields to add to our report we're going to choose department now once we choose department a number of things happen one of them is that over here in the table area we get a list of all the different departments that Excel 2010 recognized in our data and apart from being able to select one of the individual departments we can also use the filter control to choose any combination of them so for instance we could choose breads and flatbread in the chart area we see department with a symbol here showing that there's a filter on the departments and we can actually change the departments there as well and again so it works both ways between the table and the chart one other thing to know is that department appears in the axis fields down here and it's already identified as one of the axis fields for my pivot chart now one variable is obviously not going to be enough so let's do an analysis on value of sales by department so the next thing we do is to check the value box now what we now have is two fields selected and Excel 2010 has identified that the value field is going to be our vertical numerical field here 
and the department field is on the chart horizontally. Now note, value is actually in the sigma drop zone and when we are dealing with more than two fields there will be occasions when we will need to move things between zones but for the purposes of this exercise Excel has actually put everything in the right place for us so we don't need to move anything on this occasion. Now although this is a very straightforward example it's a good place to start because it enables us to look at some of the main features of pivot tables and pivot charts. Let's look at the pivot chart first of all. It's created as a normal Excel 2010 chart and we can do things like change the title, format the axes, apply different styles to the chart and so on. So we can pretty much do anything we would do to a normal chart we can do to this chart including putting it somewhere else for presentation purposes and so on. But we'll come back to that later on. Let's look at some of the powerful features that we can use here with pivot tables and charts. One of them of course is the filtering facility. So if I actually didn't want to include the figures for coffee and the figures for gift certificates I only want breads, flatbreads and say oatmeal. Click on OK and everything gets updated. Now on occasion when you're working with pivots you may find that the field list on the right disappears. It's quite easy to get it back. Normally if you just click within the pivot table or the pivot chart itself you'll see the list reappear. So just one more thing on filtering. We always have the select all feature so if we do a select all note not only that we see all of the departments um, the sales departments shown but Excel 2010 does its usual good job of fitting everything in by changing the way that the axes are labeled the grid lines and so on. And now let's look at one of the other very important basic um, features here and that is if we go back down to the drop zone for Sigma here Note that it says sum of value. By default it actually plots the sum of the values of all of the transactions and as we know here categorized by department. But we don't actually have sum of value. We can for instance go into value field settings brings up the value field settings dialog and we can change it to for instance count of value and what then happens is that Excel 2010 counts the number of transactions instead of summing the total value so we find how many transactions we have in each department. Now there are actually many options here back into value field settings we can have the average, the maximum, the minimum we can have the standard deviation and we also have options to do show values as. So for instance we could have the sum and then showing the values as a percentage of the grand total. Click on OK and basically for each of the departments we can see the percentage that its sales represent out of the grand total. So smoothies nearly 50%, gross sales just over 40% and all of the others are actually very small. So if you've not really seen or used pivot tables and pivot charts before by now you'll be looking at that and probably be quite impressed and probably see why people see that it's such a powerful feature of Excel but in fact we've only really scratched the surface so far and in the next section we're going to dive into a lot more detail using initially this example um, and more detail from this example but then building up the overall complexity so I'll see you then